Hey everyone, I recently had this wood stove here installed because I'm going to try to use this to keep the heating bill down and it's also really good in an emergency because it doesn't need electricity like my normal fuel oil furnace does. The fuel oil furnace on a cold day here, if it's like below zero degrees Fahrenheit, it will burn about anywhere from five to eight gallons a day and that gets expensive because this year fuel oil is at about it's a basically six dollars even and i had to fill my oil tank a couple weeks ago from half to full and it cost me 800 something dollars if it was empty it would have cost me you know double that and last year i couldn't believe one of my bills because it was at six dollars seventy cents this is the highest diesel prices I've ever been, and fuel oil, which is basically the same thing, it's just refined a little bit less. You just don't pay taxes on fuel oil because it's for heating. That's what the government does to try to help you a tiny bit. It's very expensive. The whole heating season last year cost about $5,000. It usually cost me under $2,000 to heat for the whole year. Because a normal year, the fuel oil prices are usually below $3. So it's double a normal year. Last year was extreme. Last year starting off, first time I filled a tank was 350. But we all know fuel fuel prices went way up. I was paying around $7, almost $7. It's down a little bit, but still pretty bad. So I decided to get this to help with the heating bill. On really cold days, I'm not going to use the furnace at all. I'm going to have this thing running. This stove is rated to heat 2,500 square feet. It's here in the basement. The footprint of the house is around 740 square feet. Double that for the whole house. This thing is oversized a bit, but that's a good thing. I wanted a big one so I could throw logs in there. Don't have to split them that much. I'm also able to just sometimes logs that aren't big in diameter, like six inches and smaller. I can just throw them in there. Don't even have to split them. And I'm going to show you guys a clip afterwards of how I split my wood. I have a manual log splitter. That's all I could afford this year. But it works really good, and I guess it's a good workout. I have, like, five cords of firewood that's not split yet. I bought one cord just as a trial to see how it goes of, you know, good wood that's pine. No, I mean uh, oak and maple. I have a bunch of pine wood. A lot of people believe that you can't burn pine wood in the house, but I was told by the stove company that's a giant myth. The only way you're going to have a hazardous problem like a fire hazard is if, if you're burning green pine with a lot of sap that builds up in the chimney. Also, it's a bigger fire hazard, and that's why people believe it, because it burns hotter, it burns faster, so you can easily overheat the stove, and that's why it has a gauge here and a gauge up top. And those gauges will ensure the right running temperature. You see right here? It should be in here. If it's burning too cold, that's when a bunch of char can build up inside here. And that's when it's a fire hazard. You want it in here, in that temperature. You don't want it overheating, which it would be down over here. And this gauge right here, you see best operation, too hot. That's so the pipe doesn't get too hot and cause a chimney fire. So this thing here, oh, also this year, there was a good rebate on going over to high-efficiency appliances or green energy appliances is a little bit less, but this is considered high-efficiency because this is a catalytic wood stove, meaning it, just like a car, a catalytic converter, it helps burn the gases a little bit more before releasing them, meaning less emissions and more heat inside the house. So, to open this thing up, anytime you want to open it when it's operating, you want to completely open the damper so it starts sucking the smoke up like a vacuum so it doesn't just come right out into the room. And I know someone's going to maybe say this is too close. The wood stove company said all that stuff right there is fine. I know that being near heat's not the best thing all the time, but that's all right. We go through that pretty fast. So now I can open it up inside. I have it nice and stuffed, ready to go. And you can see up in top, let me turn the light on, see it, can you see that moving around, damper, you can see it a little bit, but this is catalytic technology, it's supposed to help burn it up a little bit better, more efficient, 
a normal wood stove has an efficiency of usually 60%, meaning 40% of it is lost up the chimney. This one, only 30% is lost up the chimney with a 70-something efficiency rating. The furnace in the house has a 78% efficiency rating. These days, you can get furnaces that are so efficient. Some of them are up to 98% efficiency. They're so efficient, they have PVC exhaust pipes because the exhaust is cold. They have to have PVC exhaust pipes because it creates a lot of acidic condensation that dribbles back to the furnace, and it has a pump that pumps it into the sink. The acidic exhaust would cause problems with your masonry chimney or metal chimney. I got this nice little bin right here because I just throw the firewood from outside. See, I have a wagon right there parked with a whole bunch of extra wood. I can just open the window and dump it right in here into this bin. Got a bunch of firewood outside. Any kind of like scrap wood I can throw in there. This is not the best for heating. That's Aspen. The rest of this is really nice hardwood stuff with a couple pieces of pine. So yes, I am going to definitely burn the pine, but you got to keep in mind it gets a little bit hot. But that's basically all we have on the property, unless I order in stuff, which is still cheaper than fuel oil. That's why I'm doing this. I got a bunch of dead trees, so I expect this thing to pay for itself within four years of operation. And what's really cool about this thing is, if it's really, really cold outside and you don't want to let this thing cool down to clean it out... You just got to let the fire die down to mostly ash, the really hot, still burning ash. You push over to the sides, and then with this tool here, there's a little tiny, like, plug. You can lift the plug out and brush it down into this pan. Once it cools down, you pull this out, and you can go dump it out somewhere, and it allows you to be able to keep the stove running at all times. I was told by the wood stove company, I'm not sure how true this is, this thing can run at high heat for up to 12 hours without having to open the door and put more in. That is if you're using quality wood and running it properly. Or up to 40 hours, I think they said, on low heat. Because as soon as you get this thing up to temperature, you go ahead and you shut the damper and you mess with this here to keep the proper heating. This is part of the catalytic part here. This is made by Blaze King. This thing made my uh, insurance go up about 60 bucks. I had to read them some codes to make sure it was the right kind of wood stove to be able to have in a house. Because if it's not EPA approved, they will not insure your house. Like I just bought a really tiny one for camping. It's not EPA approved. You'll see what I do with that sometime in a future video. But we got a lot of wood to burn with this thing. It's going to be really fun. And we're about to fire this thing up for the first time. I was warned by the wood stove company, make sure you have a lot of stuff in there to burn really hot. Light it and shut the door because you want enough heat to get this thing going. Now that the pipe is really cold and it's really cold outside, it's not going to start vacuuming it out at first. They said sometimes you even have to put a blowtorch into the pipe to get it, you know, sucking. You know, I also thought a wood stove would also be good for, you know, how fuel prices are so high right now. And you've seen over the past few years how bad things can be with the supply chain. You know, some things are just, it takes forever for it to get here. Quality controls way down because they're mass producing stuff. And you see how things, the price can skyrocket. The supply chain can easily get crippled. And for whatever reason, if heating oil can't get delivered... This thing here, in an emergency, you can throw all kinds of wood in there, all kinds of kindling from around the yard. And my neighbor has a giant property, I'll show you in a, at the end of the video. And his house is like almost a mile away. He has so much land. And I talked to him, and any trees that fall over in his woods, he said I can cut them up and take them. Just don't be cutting the trees down unless they already fell over. And I identified a bunch of maple trees that are falling over not too far away in the woods. And I'm going to go ahead and cut those things up. But in a, in a real emergency, I, I would break furniture, throw anything in this thing. That's why I wanted a wood stove, and I thought a pellet stove was kind of a bad idea, since you can't throw bulk fuel in there. And as soon as we get this thing going and it starts getting pretty hot... Here's my idea of how to get it out of this basement room and into the actual house. I'm going to cut a hole in the ceiling here. I'm going to put a walkable vent 
it can be shut if you want it to be. But upstairs, for the time being, I'm going to lay a box fan flat on the floor to suck it up. It'll come down the staircase back into the basement and make a loop heating the house. Eventually, I want to hardwire a fan in the ceiling with a switch. You just flip a switch over by the door and it starts sucking it upstairs. But temporarily, I'd rather not do the electrical work right now. I'd rather just see how this thing goes first. The life expectancy of this stove, they told me, should be around 15 years if it is the primary heat source. So I'm hoping to have this thing for a while. Everything on it, except for the casting, is replaceable. If I was to break the glass, break the door, any of the handles, parts of the catalytic part of it, they can all be replaced. I've never used a catalytic stove before. I'm going to have to learn how to get good with this, how to regulate it really good. But it's supposed to be very efficient, and if I don't like it, once this thing eventually breaks, I'll just get a normal one. And yes, this bin was here when the wood stove company came, and this right here, they said, is just fine. They said, maybe I want to move it over a little more, just see how hot it gets during the first run. But they measured around, and this is all the distance you need by code. You need 18 inches before any combustible materials or combustible walls or ceiling. This was not needed since around the pipe they packed it with um, rock wool insulation, which isn't burning or isn't flammable at all. This spray foam is also, it has fire retardant properties in it. It would not catch on fire, but, you know, it's foam. I, I don't... I, I don't like even seeing it. Eventually, I want to put this metal over the entire room. And the pipe's already there, so it would be very hard. So I had them drill right through it. I had the stuff up ahead of time. Anyways, I got interrupted. And I was talking about these things have a rebate. 2022 is just about over. And the rebate on this thing was 26%. You get that back on your taxes. They gave me the certificate for the rebate. On the entire thing that is not even the stove that most of that price is the piping because outside the wall going up all the way to the top of the house is double wall stainless steel pipe and that was a dull no a hundred dollars a foot and it has a lifetime warranty if it ever breaks or starts corroding or anything like that falling apart next year the rebate is 30 percent but it maxes out at two thousand dollars so th this was the year to do bigger projects since it's an unlimited rebate. Next year is better for smaller projects since there's not an unlimited rebate. A lot of people were telling me I should have got a outdoor wood-burning stove and it pipes it in the house, you know, to heat your hot water and stuff. I didn't want that because it doesn't work in a power outage. I wanted something that could work anytime, anytime, no matter what happens in the world. This thing will always be able to run. And now that the piping's in place, it's very easy to replace this thing. This thing could be replaced easily. Also, this thing here, this would not fit through the door. The stove company had to take this whole window out of here and bring it in through the window. They built like a little ramp in here with timbers, rolled it down inside here, put the legs on it. Yep, would not fit through the door right here. Nope. So right here, if you look inside the wood stove, before we turn it on, you see this thing here? You remove this, which is the flame shield, out of the stove. And we don't have to do it often, but once a year it's recommended. This right here, going into the catalytic part of the stove, this can get clogged with ash and cause it to not work very well. So, you're going to have to go in here with a like a vacuum cleaner brush and just scrape it off once a year or so, because that'll make it not work very properly. And that grate just... Should get back in pretty easily. There we go. It's back in. Got a bunch of kindling in here. Once this stuff catches, I'll throw a couple really big logs in there. Start it off with a bunch of cardboard and papers. A bunch of little twigs I got in the yard. Smaller branches and bigger branches. And then small logs. that will just catch one after another. Should pretty well. And inside of here, all these bricks are replaceable. Blaze King sells replacement kits. Just use the model number of the stove. And all this stuff in here can be replaced. And the bottom can be replaced. 
where that plug is I showed you or told you about, didn't show you. All right, I'm gonna go inside and get some of the paper going. And that should catch all the rest of the kindling. I can feel cold air coming in here. That's what I was talking about. It may take a while for the heat to be able to push its way up through the pipe. But the damper is completely open until it reaches its operating temps. And once it reaches its operating temperatures, we can start messing with the catalytic controls. All right, I think this is going to go pretty good. See, there is some smoke coming into the room, so I'm going to go ahead and shut this. Hopefully it builds enough heat to go up the chimney. See condensation in there. Doesn't look like it's hot. Hopefully that heat's enough to get it going. It looks like it's kind of snuffing itself out. All right, everyone, I finally got it going good, and I'm an idiot. I had the damper shut instead of open, so it filled the room with smoke. And now the window's open. The smoke will dissipate. This wasn't hard at all to get it to go up the chimney. It's already sucking it right up and out. Wasn't hard at all. I just had the damper shut by accident. But, yep, yeah, it's definitely pulling it right out of the house now. And as soon as we reach operating temperatures, I'll shut the damper and work out everything else. Because when the damper is shut, there's usually not enough current to get it to go through the catalytic converter enough to open the door. So I have to open it, open the damper when I want to open the door. But this thing's going good now. It's actually starting to pull the smoke back out of the room. Yeah, this thing's going good like a vacuum. It's going to take a little while. The pipe is starting to warm up. Yep, it's going right up. This is going to be a big fire just at first because of the kindling. We're going to get this thing nice and warm. Then we'll throw some more stuff in there. I like how none of the smoke is coming into the room now. can actually run it with this thing open a bit. Yep, right now you can see all that smoke billowing, but it's all getting sucked up the chimney. Let's go outside and look at the chimney. You can't really see it against the white sky, but it's smoking a lot and it's snowing a lot. All right, this thing is starting to burn better. The smoke is starting to go away. It's actually starting to produce a little bit of heat. This gauge right here has not moved yet. This is still pretty cold to the touch the stove itself, but this pipe is almost into best operation. If it's running too cold, it's gonna make the creosote. That's the word I was thinking of earlier. All right, check this out. To make it burn even better, I just read online that I can leave it cracked. Watch what happens when I crack it. It got huge in there, the fire, letting that extra air in. And no smoke is getting out through the little crack. There is a lot of smoke coming out of here, though. And I was told by the stove company that's normal during first use. If I go ahead and smell it, that's paint and the oil seasoning burning off for the first time. This thing's going pretty good now. Look in there. Very hot fire going now in the stove. Look at this. Active. We're almost into full heat, and that's when we're going to be able to shut the damper off and start messing around with the catalytic control. Alright everyone, the room is still very smoky as that seasoning starts to burn off. Now that the stove is finally up to temp, I've loaded a bunch more wood into there. Now look up at the top, you see the where the catalyst is in there? 
Watch, I'm gonna go and close the damper now that we're up to temp. Watch what happens. Instantly, the catalyst starts glowing bright red, just like a catalytic converter. It glowing bright red as the smoke goes through it helps burn it further. So it won't be smoking as much outside, less emissions, and it's creating more heat. And if I go ahead and open it back up, within 10 seconds that thing will be dark again as it loses its heat. But as soon as I did this, it started burning really well, very hot. I had to shut the light off in here because there's so much glare in that window. So if you look right here, you see we're in where we're supposed to be. It's still gaining heat. The top of this, whoa. It's still not as hot as it's gonna get. Now the gauge up here actually maxed out at 400. It's actually starting to drop now because initially it was really hot because of all the kindling in there. All right, everyone, as the wood stove company told me, it has finally stopped smoking around the pipe after it burned off whatever seasoning. I don't know as it, the body continues to get hotter because it's not fully heated, the body. The gauges are just about maxed out, but this is still conducting heat around itself. Like, I can burn my hand very easily here now, but if I go here, that's still cold but it's still eventually going to heat up. This thing, while it, I first, you know, messed up, got a lot of smoke, but this here smoked for over a half an hour consistently. It's a little bit now, but almost completely gone. I had to crack all the windows in the house. It filled every single room. I don't know how it got into certain rooms, but it found its way around the entire building. So, that means I'm going to have to do a lot of laundry, cleaning, everything. Everything's going to smell like smoke now. But now it looks pretty good. Nothing's smoking at the moment. Fire's burning really good with the door cracked. I don't have it, the catalyst, the, I don't have the catalyst running at the moment. I'm just using it as a normal stove at the moment. But I can see how that would work really good. I'm just trying to make a lot of heat, you know, to get rid of that. I wanted it to burn as fast as possible and stop smoking, which it did. This right here is still climbing. This one, like I said, has stopped. If anything, it has actually gone down. All right, I just threw a huge log in there. Now it's time to button this thing up, shut the damper, go over here, and now that it's fully heated, you see how it's skating over here? I'm going to give it like 10 minutes. If it keeps continuing up, I can go ahead and turn this thing down. Like I said earlier, I was told by the stove company, if this is all the way on low, it can go for like 40 hours potentially, depending on what fuel is in it. On high, it can potentially stay hot for 12 hours. That looks really cool. This looks so cool. All right, it looks like most of it just got snuffed out. So now it's just gonna burn really slowly. I have the setting on high at the moment. So that means it should go about 12 hours if it's properly loaded. All right, everyone, this thing's been burning a couple hours and it completely stopped smoking. The house is starting to clear up, the smoke is going away. I think this is gonna work out nicely. Just had to learn how to use it a little better. Right now, the damper is completely shut, and I have the catalyst control on high right now. Eventually, I'll mess around with getting it over to the low side. Just got to find the perfect point. Over on low, reduces the air so it burns a little slower. But I want it to burn pretty fast right now because I'm making sure the thing is broken in properly. Hear that cool knocking noise? I just turned down the catalyst control a bit since we're a little bit too hot. So I turn this thing down and you can hear it rapidly cooling down. And the stove pipe temperature has gone down a ton.
All right, I will make an update sometime in the future with this thing, but been running now 10 hours. Look at this. Cold to the touch. Can't believe it didn't radiate off of this thing at all. Cold to the touch. This right here is warm, but not too hot to touch. Over here, absolutely nothing is warm. Concrete wall is a little bit warm for some reason, even though that's further away than that. Maybe because it can't get rid of the heat like that thing has air on the other side. Running at a good temperature right now. Been messing around with the control over there. Running good. Furnace hasn't had to turn on all day. A big concern of mine was it would make the whole house smell like smoke, you know. But after my initial mistake and it burning off the metal seasoning, nothing anymore absolutely smoke free as long as I open the damper open it correctly smoke doesn't even come into the room very nice you know one other thing I thought was going to be a problem with the wood stove but it really is not a concern at all anymore now that I realize because I thought this room was going to get way hotter we haven't even put the hole in the floor to suck it upstairs yet and this room is sustaining about 80 something degrees. There's a little fan blowing right now to get it out the door, but that's about it. And if we come over here, this was my concern. There's a toilet down here in this unfinished basement room, but there's also a toilet upstairs. It made me a little nervous because the plumber told me if it got too hot, it could melt the wax seal on that toilet and cause a leak. Well, after my research, those toilet seals typically don't start melting or becoming soft until it's 120. So, I don't think that's ever going to be a problem. Alright everyone, this is how I get my firewood. Anytime that metal bin downstairs gets empty, I'm going to come out here with the wagon, bring a whole load of it, which is going to be a couple days of heat from this pile. This is all hardwood stuff burns really well. In the back, I'm going to split all the pine logs, slowly mix those in. Those only have like 50% of the BTU value. They're not as good, but they'll definitely help. It's free. Free wood after all. I just have to split it, and I'm going to show you how I split it. I got this manual log splitter, really cheap from Harbor Freight. Alright everyone, so this year heating oil is just so expensive I decided to put the wood stove in and I believe it'll pay for itself in savings within maybe four or five years because a cord of firewood is a lot less than heating oil if you convert all the BTU value and all that. You see, I got a heating oil tank right back there. It's outside in this little, it's not even a garage, it's like a shed attached to the back of the house. And the heating oil... I just had that filled not too long ago, and I brought it from a quarter, no, a uh, half a tank all the way to full. Cost $800. I can't believe it. Diesel is at $6 now, and diesel was $350 at the beginning of last year. By the end of last year, it was like $670. It's gone down a little bit. But it's still scary because diesel's like uncertain. I've never seen diesel and gasoline prices so different, vastly apart. Diesel's always a little bit more, but now it's like double. So I bought this thing here from Harbor Freight. I don't remember how much it was. It was far cheaper than buying a gasoline one. I do want to get one someday, but I couldn't afford it this year. So this is a manual log splitter. It's actually pretty cool. It's not hard at all. It's just a little time consuming. I'm going to show you how I use this thing. All right, everyone, here is a piece of pine that I just pulled off my pile. You can see it's already naturally cracking because it's dried out. This tree I cut down in the spring, but it was already dead. So this is very dry and it'll burn really fast. But you put this thing in here and this is going to be fine. But if you have a really short log, I have a bunch of metal spacers. Let me show you. I'm going to grab it from over here. 
I have a whole bunch of these metal blocks. You see, you can fit it in there. Not this time because the log is big enough, but you get what I mean. You have this little knob here. You have to turn that and then like this. A really good workout. See how slow it moves? But it's got tons of pressure. It can go through all kinds of logs. Isn't that cool? And now this knob is what brings the shock back. But don't bring it all the way back because it's just going to make more work for yourself. Put the log back in there and pump away. Now, do I think this is going to last a long time? Probably not for the price. So that's why I got a two year warranty. Harbor Freight is pretty good with their warranties. They'll just keep replacing it, so I'm not afraid to use it. I'm going to use this thing to split many cords of firewood throughout the winter just to save money. Look at this, it's so dry. That crack I showed you earlier really helped pull it apart. These really small pieces are good kindling. Pine is a much better kindling for getting the fire going because it burns so hot. And that's about it. I purposely got a big wood stove, so really small logs, I don't even have to split them, I can just throw them right in. Like, my house is only 740 square feet, but the stove I bought is capable of 2,500. I purposely oversized it, so you can throw bigger things in there, you know, it'll smolder all night. And it's really good. So I just gave you guys a quick demonstration on this log splitter. So far, I've had a good experience with it. I got lucky as far as this. I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a whole bunch of trees I took down this year, dangerously close to the house. They were all dead, so they're nice and seasoned. Got this pile here the size of a car. That's probably three cords worth sitting right there. I'm gonna split all this and slowly burn it. I already have one cord of my own split that I did. And look in the woods behind the house. One, two, whole bunch more dead trees. And there's even a good maple tree there that lo looks like it's about to die. That'll make some good firewood. These aspen logs, they look really old, right? They're not. They've only been out here for a year and a half. Aspen is horrible for burning. Unless it's in a dry spot, it absorbs water like a sponge. You can't really cure it unless you split it and you keep it covered, you know? It has a horrible beat to you value. I'm not even gonna bother splitting this for the house. I'm just gonna split it and throw it in a campfire. Not even worth it. This is all the pine I split myself. It's in a tiny little log shed behind the house. Now, I only own two acres here, which is not a lot of land, especially if you're gonna be cutting down your own trees and using them as firewood. That'll be depleted pretty fast. I think that if you're heating a house, there's a certain amount of acres you typically need for it to grow back at a faster rate. But I just walked out the property line. It's divided by this little trickling stream here. And this guy's property here, he doesn't mind if I'm on it. This guy owns like 170 acres. His house, you'd have to walk here for like 20 minutes to even get to it. I talked to him recently and he said that any of this stuff near my property I can take out of his woods. He doesn't want me cutting down any trees, but if they're already down, I'm going to go ahead and take them. See this uprooted right here? It uprooted. I think it might still be alive, but it's going to die. Those are two really good maple trees. And I'm going to... Those are widow makers, but I know how to take them down. That's, that'll be some really good firewood. Let it season. That'll be good for next year. Hope this video is interesting. Thanks for watching and have a great day.